Ryan. I'm a quilt maker, designer, and author. And I'm here today to talk to you about color. Color is one thing that I just love to play with in my quilts. I'm gonna show you my flame quilt and how you can use color as a design element. So let's look at the flame quilt. You can tell it's a rainbow quilt. I love rainbows. I'm starting the rainbow in the upper corner here and I'm taking it all the way through diagonally to the bottom. Now, even though I started my rainbow at the top corner, you could start it in the middle. I wish I had started my, my colors purple because I love purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors. And it was really painful to cut off the purple blocks at the edges. So instead of doing the rainbow in color order from the top, you could start it anywhere you want. Now, coming from a traditional quilting background, I love the idea of using the same block over and over again. So to explore the idea of negative space, I use the same flame block, but instead of using colors, I use neutral fabrics. And I use these neutral fabrics to create the rainbow in the diagonal to draw the viewer's eye to the rainbow. One thing you could do in your flame quilt is play with the placement of these neutral blocks. So instead of doing it in a diagonal, you could use the negative space or the neutral blocks to create a color wheel. So you could use the neutral blocks in a color wheel. I'm sorry, the neutral blocks to accent the color wheel in the center of the quilt. So those are just some ideas that you could do in your flame quilt. I'd like to show you some things over here on the table. So these are flame blocks and I've already made these. Before I talk any more about the flame block, I'd like to do a pit stop and talk to you about color value. So I've got five different blue fabrics here and they're all arranged in color value. And we quilters like to refer to these as high volume down to low volume. And these, these fabrics are fairly easy to put into um, volume order because they're monochromatic. But if you ever find yourself struggling to find value, you might want to try using a value finder. So there's a value finder in the back of this book. I'm going to use the red here. And when I use it, I'm just going to hold the value finder a little bit off the fabric. Yeah, and oops, I'm, I'm seeing I, I switched these two. These need to be flipped. Yes, this is the lighter value one. So here. So a color value finder tool might be useful. Now in more complex fabrics, this fabric has many, many colors. It's rainbow, it's gorgeous. Now because it's multicolored, I'm going to use both the green and the red. And you'll be able to see the different values in the fabric. And it's, I think it's interesting how this one piece of fabric has different values just in this piece of fabric. And it would be interesting to see how when you cut up the fabric, one piece of fabric might have a low volume while the other might have a darker volume. Okay, so we've got our value lesson. We've got our fabrics arranged from low to high. Now I've chosen three fabrics, this low volume, this medium, and this darker volume. And just by using these three fabrics, I was able to get six different looking flame blocks. There we go. Okay, so these are six different looking flame blocks. And just by changing the placement of the values, I'm able to create a movement of color through the blocks. So when you make your quilt block, your quilt top, you can use value play as a design element to create some visually interesting movement that will keep your viewer's eye moving across your quilt top. Okay, so I've shown you that. Let's move on to piecing a flame block. Okay, so I've got my block pieces laid out here. If you've ever pieced a log cabin block, this is the same idea, except of course these pieces are angled. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna piece these two small pieces together, then you'll add on this piece, and then you'll add this piece, and then the last step is adding this piece. Okay? So let's sew this piece together. 
Well, I've done this probably a thousand times. And if you've never, if you've sewn angled pieces before, you'll know this trick. But if you've never sewn with angled pieces before, let me show you some tricks that I use. Excuse me. Okay, so when I put these together, I'm looking for this dog ear to be sticking out about a quarter of an inch. So if you've never done this before, you might wanna do this trick. So find your ruler, any ruler will do, you just need a quarter of an inch. You're gonna lay your bottom piece out like this, right side up, and you're gonna find the quarter inch right here. Then you're gonna lay your second piece on top, right sides together. Once you get those lined up, you're ready to sew. Ed. Okay, so I'm just sewing from each divot to each divot. Where's my needle up? Okay, snip that. I'm gonna take this over to the pressing board. With the flame blocks, it's probably better to press the seams open. But of course, if you feel very strongly about it, feel free to press them as desired. Okay, so I've got my pieces sewn together. The next step would be to sew these pieces together. Now, be careful at this step, because sometimes in my classes, the pieces get sewn like this, and then that would put this darker, in the, this darker fabric in a different location, which I think would be pretty, but you might not like that. So just be careful in the placement. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for the dog ears to be overhanging about a quarter, about a quarter of an inch. Just to demo this again. I overhang those by about a quarter of an inch. It might not be perfect. And as the log cabin piecing or the flame blocks get bigger, you might notice that they don't line up exactly, and that's okay. You can trim them when the block is finished. I'm gonna sew this again. Good. All right. And I'm going to my pressing board, and again, I'm pressing the seam open. I found that if I press to the side, my machine tended to Give, it, give the seam a smiley face, which isn't good. Okay, so the next step is going to be sewing this small piece to this side, and you're gonna do the same thing. Right sides together. I'm looking for that quarter inch. I think I've got it pretty well aligned, but I'm just gonna give it a a double check. And as you get more comfortable sewing these angled pieces, you'll find you don't need to do a double check. But it's always better safe than sorry, right? All right, I'm sewing with my quarter inch seam. Got my scissors, snip. And pressing the seam open. Be careful with your fingers, you don't want to burn those. Okay, and then the next and final step would be sewing these pieces together in the same manner. The last thing I want to show you is I just want to talk about the sashing. Many of my students come into my classes with their sashing already picked out, but they leave with a different sashing in mind, and I want to show you why. So for my sashing options, I've got three low volume, dark, and medium. If I put a flame block on here, you'll see that different parts of the block are gonna contrast more depending on which background you choose. So I think that the dark contrasts with the dark background just because this is black and this is blue. One thing that you'll probably need to think of is for your neutral fabrics, which sashing you choose is gonna make your neutral flame blocks pop out differently. So the black 
background might make the neutrals pop more than you intend, which is fine. I think that would be a beautiful stained glass look, but it's just something to keep in mind as you're making your quilt top.